Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the meeting tonight. Please be seated. Councillor, feel more comfortable removing your jackets. You are welcome to do so. Apologies. I've received apologies from Councillor Axford, Brody, Chapman, Councillor Lilly, Councillor Mosdale, Councillor Outlaw, Councillor Stevens, Councillor Whitehouse, Councillor Whittle, Councillor Mirwell. Are there any other apologies? No. Thank you. Councillor Axford, yes. He was first. Thank you. I would like to advise both members of the public and councillors that this meeting is being recorded. I can reiterate this is a meeting that is open to the public, but it is not a public meeting. As this is an extraordinary meeting, there is no opportunity for public participation. I therefore ask that noise in the gallery is kept to a minimum. There's no fire drills planned tonight, so if the fire alarm sounds, uh, we will leave through the front door, through the steps out in the front of the building, opposite the police station, where the police station is, we gather there, or through the back stairs, case down, and gather in a car park. But if we make sure the mobile phones are switched off. And are there any declarations of interest from councillors tonight? No. If I go on to the second item, tonight's meeting was called about the St Mary's Junction improvements. In accordance with legislation, the chairman has received a request signed by five members requesting extraordinary meeting of the council to be discussed to discuss the improvement works at St Mary's Junction in relation to unrelated recommendation. I wish to clarify the role of the council in relation to the item, agenda item before us tonight. The council is entitled to discuss or debate or consider any issues with respect to the discharge of functions or matters directly controlled or by directly affecting the council's functions. However, the council is unable to take binding decisions on matters that are executive functions with regard to the motion before the Council today, this is an executive function and has previously been subject of a decision by the Cabinet. Any motion or resolution on, the, on an executive matter can only be treated as advisory and does not bind the Cabinet. It would be up to the Leader of the, or Cabinet to de determine action, if any, in relation to such matters. That does not prevent members of the Council raising matters for discussion, debate or consideration through motions, questions, petitions or reports at Council. Thank you. The motion is proposed by Councillor Julie Jones-Evans. Uh, you've got five minutes to to put your motion forward, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I um, just want to make you aware that I want to make a tiny, tiny amendment to my motion. So I want to remove the word abandon and replace it with the word pause. So my motion, I, I hope everyone can just alter their papers rather than me going printing more motions out for everybody. Um, so my motion now reads that council agrees to pause the proposed works at St Mary's Junction until after improvement works have been completed for the Coppins Bridge Junction. Thank you. Yes, yes. I fully acknowledge what Councillor Jones Evans has said. I'm sure they'll chill out by a second and before she starts. But um, can I then notify you I wish to propose an amendment to the motion? But can I call for my seconder? Yes. yes. Could we have a seconder, Councillor Fuller? Do you wish to speak now? So, 
Chairman, I will reserve the right to speak later on. Thank you. Right. Councillor Jones Evans. Thank you very much. Um, I apologise for um, calling this extraordinary meeting of full council um, and, uh, on a day where Parliament again has been recalled as well because there's lots to discuss and I believe this particular issue is very, very important, not only just to Newport but to the whole island with strategic importance and the, the amount of money that's been spent. Now I think it's just the wrong scheme at, at the wrong time and very helpfully um, the Leader of the Council sent us the letter, which was the uh, letter of offer for the money, um, saying it's for a package of high, highways works in Newport Town Centre. Then it goes on to say, specifically development of 1,400 houses at Camp Hill. Now, we stu still do not have Camp Hill, as we don't own this, as, as confirmed by uh, the Leader uh, last week. And it throws up more um, concerns for me when you hear our Prime Minister saying there's going to be 10,000 more prison places. Well, there you've got a mothball prison there at Camp Hill. That seems to me the most likely scenario. But we do still have issues in Newport Town Centre. So, you know, why, don't we in, why are we investing in a fantasy of Camp Hill when we have a real nightmare in Newport Town Centre as we speak? The Newport tra traffic model was brought forward in 2010. Uh, many members in, this, uh, in the room today will recall, and it was a raft of schemes to improve traffic flow uh, around Newport. Um, one of them, one of the, uh, the items, uh, the schemes put forward was, uh, was closing the High Street entrance. That was onto Coppins Bridge. That was going to be solving some of the issues around Coppins Bridge. And when we ask why St Mary's now, and why not Coppins Bridge, why not, why not St George's, you know, the, the piece of land, piece of road between um, Matalan and, uh, and Coppins Bridge. We, but there aren't any schemes drawn up yet. Yet these are where we have the pinch points. These are where we have the issues. And this is what we've been talking about since 2010. I'll just give you one example. So we, there was, in the 2010 traffic model, it was it said there was going to be uh, alterations to the carriageway or the dual carriageway, um, specifically underneath, I'll call it the little roundabout, little um, Sainsbury's roundabout, that area around there underneath the bridge, so you know what I mean. And I was very excited about this because that's been a terrible spot for, um, for pedestrians for many, many years, coming down from Hooks Way, people walking to the industrial estate and the college in particular. And I was great, brilliant, so excited. And then I hear only this year, <laughs> in the summer, that it's no longer happening, We're no longer having the improvements down there because engineering, we, we, um, in engineering terms, it can't be done too difficult to do. Yet it's taken us nine years for the engineers to work out they can't do that piece. Now I know this, this letter was, we got this letter in 2016-17, that one of this scheme would have been part of that. And we should be doing that. And as you know, there was an accident there on the 12th of September when a college student got knocked over. So these things do need to be done. These are real issues right now. St Mary's is not an issue right now. Coppins Bridge is the issue. Getting onto Coppins Bridge and off Coppins Bridge is the issue, and that's where we should be focusing our, you know, it's a substantial government grant, but do what's needed first, not in something that may happen now or in 15 years' time, a situation that we, we're definitely not there yet. We just had this Heritage England report. Um, they did it, went to Newport, Cowes, and Ride. And the highlight for Newport is dominated by traffic. It spoils our beautiful historic town. So let's just go back to what that letter said and what we want to do in 2010, try and sort out the, the, the traffic in our town centre. Now, I remember C Councillor Mosdall last week was saying, well, why, why are you suddenly saying all this? Well, I'm not suddenly saying all this, actually. We've been saying it for quite some time, and, and we've been consistent, and I've been consistent, been saying the lack of sustainable transport options. You know, we, uh, we've been great at getting access fund money, uh, sustainable transport funding, uh, the LC WIP's been down as well. We've had millions of pounds to do hearts and minds, but nothing, nothing to do the, the infrastructure that we need. You know, you can't say to people, yeah, get on your bike, get walking, catch the bus, great. When you're, you're, you're gridlocked, you know, and that's if you want it. I mean, you know, Council Ward, you said yourself, you know, this is about in our corporate plan, we want to ease congestion. Well, a good way of easing congestion in Newport Town Centre is getting people out of their cars. Take some cars off the road, not put more on, and not create conditions for, for more and more vehicles, which, you know, we've all seen recently 
that sometimes um, these figures aren't quite what they seem. And again, you know, I've got a real problem with the, the junction as it is being put before us. Again, Councillor Mosdell said, I'll sum up later, shall I, if I get the opportunity? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's becoming normal practice now that all members get cited an amendment when it's put forward. I've got copies. I'll wait for that to be circulated, and then I'll read it. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read the motion, the amendment to the motion. Um, can I have a point of order, please? Yes, Chair. Councillor. Thank you. I believe this motion is actually fundamentally different to my motion because my motion calls for the improvement works to be completed for the Coffins Bridge Junction, and this is just talking about uh, the, the timing of works and traffic and about the, you know, the traffic disruption while St Mary's roundabout is taken. So this is completely different from my motion. And this, this meeting is only possible, it was, and it was called because of this specific motion. This is not my motion, not anywhere near my motion. It is I, 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 I spoke to, the, uh, to the, uh, our legal team earlier, talking about my motion, I, I was, and I said I may have an amendment, and I said as long as it's just you know, a minor amendment, that's fine. And so I've gone for that one word, just to just to really sort of pull back from the veracity of my of the first motion. This is nowhere near my motion. I do not believe that we should be even considering it, Chairman. I'd like it to be withdrawn. It is an amendment to the motion. It does mention the St Mary's roundabout, no. which is linked to the Coppins Bridge. No. <laughs> It's, I'm sorry, Chairman, to be difficult, but it's completely different in its thrust of it. I'm talking, this has been called to talk so we can debate to pause the proposed works until after improvement works have been completed for Coppins Bridge. This is talking about traffic lights. Yes. It's talking about diversions. It's not talking about the fun Councilor. fundamentally different, and you should not be debating or accepting this motion, this amendment. In this amendment to the motion, we'd like to speak on Councillor Stewart. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so, members have got it in front, but I will read it to members of the public who haven't got a copy of this motion, and then can my time start from them, please? So, this council requests Cabinet to urgently review the timing of works and traffic light operations at Cobbins Bridge to ensure that any traffic disruption caused by those works and the associated works at St Mary's Roundabout are reduced to the minimum possible. The amendment that I have submitted, and indeed the original motion, seeks to challenge a decision by Cabinet a year ago to start road improvements at St Mary's Junction, a decision which was not challenged by scrutiny at that time, there was approved, which was approved publicly by the Cabinet and led to a plan that has since been improved to take account of cyclists and pedestrians needing to cross roads following consultation. This is a junction which already has major traffic queues, and I'm referring to St Mary's, at peak travel times, impacting on our environment, impacting on the lives of commuters and many other island residents, and according to professional advice, is likely to worsen unless we take strategic steps to improve the infrastructure now. Members know we have received 9.6 million from government. I made sure that letter was circulated in the um, Eden of Transparency. Um, and that was specifically for infrastructure improvements ahead of the 1,400 houses proposed for Camp Hill, putting infrastructure improvements ahead of housing development for once. I can confirm I've engaged currently with Camp Hill and the MOJ meetings, which I expect to go to next week. Camp Hill is not earmarked for retention to return to use at this time. I've spoken with the prison governor. 
Now, the improvements will also bring greater safety to road users at the roundabout, which those who regularly use it know currently involves a level of risk as you judge when to enter the roundabout. That risk will be removed. Other benefits include future-proofing the junction as vehicle numbers continue to grow, and I have details of those which I may use in summing up, and at a local ward level, will help to address parking issues, particularly at Honey Hill School, which parents will be all too familiar with. It will also be used as an opportunity to connect to our new £28 million recycling plant and enable the electricity to put into the national grid, which is taking place in Forest Road, and generate that potential for electrical provision to places like St Mary's Hospital and beyond. In addition, I do not want to see this council challenged over the use of this funding when we have been successful in getting the money and are currently engaged with government over the need for more funding as part of our island deal. This is not a risk we need to take. However, there are two significant points I think I need to address. Firstly, the need to do as much as we can to communicate to our residents particularly regular users of the junction now and during the period of disruption, so they all have the information we can give them about the roadworks, including when and how these journeys will be affected. This is in addition to the extensive communication plan that I know has already been arranged, I've got a copy, and I've asked for clear information to be published in the local media and for public information meetings to take place in Newport as soon as practicable, live uh, screened on social media if achievable, so a maximum audience have that information. Secondly, although the proposed works at St Mary's are not themselves focused on Coppingbridge, they are part of a staged improvement scheme with a number of stages, which includes the Coppingsbridge roundabout. Cabinet member Ian Ward and I have engaged with officers to explore what further steps can be brought forward for Coppingsbridge, consideration for which includes lane realignment, traffic light management, turning lights off when not essential, and improving access signage for vehicles entering and exiting the roundabout from different locations. On Monday, I met with our road hauliers, <coughs> together with another, uh, another member of the council, and had uh, listened to their concerns about infrastructure and roads on the, on the island generally. They were not against the proposed works at St Mary's, but they have wider concerns around our roads generally, and the need for us to consider their needs at over 14 lorries come down from cows to Newport every day for the aggregates and I listen to that and I think we need to do something about that. So I'm going to encourage members to support the proposed works, work with us to mitigate their impact and come forward with other positive suggestions regarding further improvements for Newport. Finally, as members, I know you know I am keen to see plans for a Medina Bridge progress as soon as practicable. I believe this holds the long-term solution to much of the lack of infrastructure identified and will have a positive environmental end to impact, as well as alleviate congestion. We are already underway with a feasibility study, and I aim to bring plans forward as soon as possible so we can get funding and take this project forward. So I ask members to support the amendment, and I look for a seconder. Second leader. Seconder. Councillor Archinson, would you like to speak now, or reserve? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor John Howard. Would you like to speak? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. My question is not so much the final job. My question is there seems to be very little stuff going forward to show you what the traffic arrangements are. I mean, at the moment, for the next five weeks, they're going to close the road going west to Yarmouth, Shelfleet, and all those people. So if you're coming for a ride and you want to go to Yarmouth or Tottenham, you've got to then go all the way through Newport. Newport is a very crowded road during the busy times. You'll probably double the traffic. And all we seem to have is an illuminated sign telling people the road's closed. Nothing about alternative guiding of traffic through Newport. And it seems to me that we're not thinking about diversions or anything else. Just throw the people. Here you are, you can't go up through Forest Road to go to Yarmouth. You can't go to the Forest Road to go to the West White. You've got to work your way through Newport on the busy times. It's going to take ages for people to get through this. Carisbrook is horrendous now. What is going to be like, Chairman, 
when they start putting almost double the amount of traffic up through there. Nobody thinks about this. It seems to me that, oh, we'll just put up an illuminated sign telling them it's closed. They can find their own way through. And I don't think the effort's gone in to, to do this. So I'm wondering whether we could have something to, sh to show us what you intend to do to keep the traffic moving when you close roads. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Al. I'm sure there will be no version signs, as usual. Uh, we're not aware of the facts yet. But I don't think that's good enough. Oh, well, there probably will be signs. Maybe we'll think about it when there's a lot of traffic covered. jams. That'll be covered. I want to know before it starts, not muddle our way through it and then do something about it. Could I remind members that you're speaking to the amendment of the motion? Uh, could I have Councillor Garrett next, please? Oh, Councillor Price, sorry. Councillor Price before Councillor Garrett. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, it will come as no surprise to um, everyone here that I can't support this amendment. Um, it doesn't pause the work of St Mary's, nor does it actually deal with the issues which is the nub of this problem, which is Coppins Bridge. Um, this meeting was called not to discuss the improvements and the expected additional capacity or the future proof in St Mary's, but it is to discuss why. Why now? Why ahead of other schemes? Why are far busier and congested junctions not being considered first? Who decided this to be first? It's not the Cabinet. The Cabinet made the final decision. But who hatched this initial plan to deal with St Mary's first? The public would like to understand how that, how that decision was made to start with, why we went down this path first. Um, I represent Newport North, which includes Fairley Road, by far the most congested road on the island, Staplers Road, the Lower Dual Carriageway, the Fairley Slip Road, South Street and the Lower Newport High Street, all of the roads leading to Cobbins Bridge by one. Um, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, on offer for my residents who have to endure no end of con congested traffic in and around where they live. One of my residents is running a petition currently that's only been in, in progress a few days and it already has exceeded the 2,500 signatures um, to ask that the work at St Mary's is halted or paused. Um, clearly, we're at a point where possibly this can't be paused or halted. Um, you know, the numbers here, we can see that probably this motion is, is going to be carried. Um, but what I would like is some kind of reassurance and an understanding tonight that Coppins Bridge should have been the priority to start with. It should still be the priority now. There is no call to be dealing with a junction that doesn't currently have congestion all day like Coppins Bridge does. And I would ask that the leader and the cabinet member um, agree to a trial period or an experimental period of switching the lights off on Coppins Bridge in their entirety, except the slip road to Fairley and the pedestrian crossings for an experimental period overnight and then extended to 24 hours a day, which could actually become the permanent solution that I believe the residents of the Isle of Wight want. And I, I actually have huge faith and believe that the residents would use Coppins Bridge respectfully and make that situation work if only our council will listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Garrett, you next to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Price has alluded to the, his own wish to understand where this scheme came from. Uh, m members are confused about this scheme as to why it must be ran through at this time. Um, if members are confused, it is no wonder that the public is confused, it's puzzled, it's frustrated, it's getting angry about a decision being made to spend millions of pounds of public money, albeit from central government, but albeit that is still taxpayers' money, on a scheme that is not necessary now. What is necessary now is Coppins Bridge. That has been obvious from that time when I first, and I've been consistent about this, called for consultation uh, on the scheme. It came out through the survey that I ran. It came out in the survey that the council ran that people were commenting over and over again, the real problem is Coppins Bridge. And if Coppins Bridge has big problems, then it's going to take big money. So you don't take a huge, great whack 
out of the £10 million that have been provided by government to, to use it on St Mary's. The Leader of the Council spoke of benefits, and there are benefits, a, a dedicated bus lay-by, a pedestrian crossing, some rather paltry efforts towards um, cyclists, actually. They really are pathetic, actually, shared, shared lanes when we could do, be doing things properly. But those benefits do not require the wholesale digging up of St Mary's roundabout. They could be done with hundreds of thousands of pounds, not millions of pounds. All through this, though, I have stressed the need to engage with the people of my ward, Parkhurst Ward, the people of Newport and Carisbrook, the people of the Isle of Wight, about this scheme. And at every stage, despite warm words, I have been rebuffed. Six, seven months ago, I went to Cabinet and asked, will you please start consulting and engaging with people now? And yet, nothing happened. And indeed, so bad has been the communications that were the crucial element of my ward, Camp Hill, which is going to see atrocious rat running through it, was missed out of a letter drop. Thankfully, I was able to persuade an officer of the, of, the, of the rightness of my thinking that that should now happen, and that is happening. But that is way too little, too late. You go on the council, the Ireland Road dedicated website, which in the 21st century really should be up to scratch, and you just get a screed of text and a few PDF documents. We were shown yesterday some, some materials which are still only in development to explain this scheme. This should have been done months ago. This scheme is failing the people of the Isle of Wight, and the administration is failing the people of the Isle of Wight in the way it is tackling it. This am amendment does nothing to address that fundamental dissatisfaction that people have with this scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Julie jones -Evans. Thank you. I don't accept this, um, this amendment is an amendment to my motion. I just want to reiterate that, that I don't believe that's against, against our constitution. However, I will welcome this, the, uh, the chance to continue as I was earlier. I want to talk about the lack of checks and balances. Now, this, this new scheme should have come back for another consultation. It's very, very different from the scheme that the Cabinet passed in 2018 and that the, 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 um, the public were consulted upon. You know, you can't go, they said, oh, it's just, it's just taking the roundabout out the middle. It's exactly the same. Well, it's not exactly the same. You know, that's, that's a major piece of infrastructure, the roundabout, with, with greenery on it. It actually it looks quite pleasant. We've taken all that greenery away, just have a big wasteland of concrete and with uh, traffic lights. Now, the parish council, well, we've, we've got a, we're doing, redoing our toilets in Newport at the moment. We're having to um, make them shorter by half a metre. We're going back to planning to have a cons consultation again, because that's what you should do, and that's what should have happened with this. You know, what I would want to come out of this scheme, I want the, to, the, the council to reassess the traffic forecast for this junction based on historic and current trends and projected increase in population. I want to ensure excessive capacity for vehicle movements is not provided, as this is likely to lead to in increased traffic, undermining council policy to encourage more sustainable transport modes, reduce air pollution and reduce CO2 emissions as part of the efforts to tackle the climate crisis declared by this council in this room. Change the underlying approach brief for the junction works to ensure this work, the works address all modes based on the user hierarchy highlighted in Manual for Streets, considering users' needs in the following order, pedestrians, cyclists, public transport, specialist service users, that's emergency services, waste, etc. Obviously, we're right between the Forest Road and uh, uh, Depot and the uh, St Mary's Hospital, of course. Um, and then, then, then you talk about uh, other most traffic. They come last in the hierarchy. Refocus the work on movement of people rather than vehicles with an appropriate focus on more sustainable modes and consideration of how good quality facilities for walking, cycling and public transport can reduce demand for vehicle capacity. Implement design changes to ensure the changes address the Department for Transport's stated goal of making cycling and walking the natural cho choices for shorter journeys or as part of a longer journey. 
In particular, consider the opportunities to provide high quality direct walking and cycling routes that reconnect the town, the college, hospital, industrial and office developments on Riverway and Dodna, and the college, and the housing on the former prisoner estates. These links should be created as part of the junction improvement plans and not seen as a separate issue. Engage the user groups in the process above to ensure user meet needs are met and accessibility issues are fully addressed before new designs are drafted. I want to ensure the council seeks advice from suitably qualified transport planners and engineers with experience in designing for active travel, other to say almost, as we in Newport are meeting with Hampshire tomorrow who are very well grounded in providing these sorts of schemes. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Flora Pisi Wilcox. You've got three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot support this amendment. Um, Chairman, I am nothing if not consistent. So, for the umpteenth time, I reiterate my concerns. Look out of that window right now. The blockage is on the left-hand lane towards Sandown at Coppins Bridge. Up to four exits are using that lane, Freshwater Cows, St Mary's and the Slip Road. By, by going ahead with this scheme, we will be creating a funnel. That is a huge volume coming from cows, hitting that narrow, tiny end when it gets to, car, to Coppins Bridge. We're putting the cart before the horse. Deal with that issue first. Ensure that the floating bridge is consistently reliable. <laughs> Three weeks out of service. It's just, it's just atrocious. Thirdly, where are the health and safety audits for alternative routes? We have just experienced on the Cows to Newport Road seven, seven to ten days of disruption. That was for resurfacing. 45 minutes to one hour of delays on that road. Unclassified, restricted roads become rat runs. Mums forced to push prams on the white line in the middle of the road. HGVs and buses using a six foot six restriction on roads. All of you who support this motion tonight will be supporting the death or the serious injury of residents on our island. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hastings. Thank you, speak. Chairman. Interesting to follow that one. Uh, right, there is, there is no magic wand for Coffins Bridge without the likes of a Medina Bridge that this administration is looking seriously at with feasibility study. Island Roads told us yesterday at a briefing that the section to the, on the Matalan roundabout is not ready to start and is still in the planning design stage and is more difficult than, they, than we might think as because of the utilities involved. A flyover or a tunnel for Coppins was ruled out yesterday by Island Roads due to it being a conservation area and environmental issues. Previously, as a layperson, I thought perhaps Coppins should, should be completed first. Then I started to listen to experts, and I, and I am not a highways engineer, nor any on the, in the chamber on the opposite side, to, to my knowledge. But this scheme has had a second independent scrutiny from Hampshire County Council engineers and approved. The government grant was approved because of the forthcoming development at Camp Hill. And how often have we sat in planning committee and heard the criticism of bringing forward an application without the infrastructure being in place? We also often hear that roadworks and utility companies should work simultaneously, which is, which is happening in this case, with SSE installing new cabling at the same time as the forest road widening being completed. And if we do not start at the same time, there would be two forest roadworks, separate times, and I'm sure members would criticize this. This cabling, incidentally, is required for the new energy from waste plant to enable us to output energy from the plant to the grid, or indeed to supply St. Mary's Hospital with power, which fits with our commercial and one public service ambitions within the administration's corporate plan. 
Uh, this scheme was known about and went to scrutiny in September 18 and then on to Cabinet. I actually sat on that scrutiny committee. The recommendations from that scrutiny were to look at the northbound travel from St Mary's Hospital, which now has a U-turn for the purpose. The second was to use 106 monies for the purpose of active travel and assist pedestrians, cyclists, etc. And I believe some of that has been added to the scheme. To stop this scheme, without being ready to go ahead with the Matterland section or anything else around Coppins, would mean unnecessary delay to, uh, to, await the, to, sorry, to await the readiness of two-lane adjustments and wait for the design to come forward. All this would achieve is, is the devaluing of the grant funds and have less, uh, we'd have less value to put into the rest of the scheme. And I believe we've already lost on the value of this, uh, this grant, something in the region of three to five hundred thousand pounds. So we don't want to delay it any further. Therefore, Chairman, I will not be voting for the stopping of this scheme and I support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hobart, you're next to speak, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, what I require, obviously, my ward is Carisbrook. Um, the diversion of westbound traffic will be coming up through Newport, up Carisbrook, Heights, uh, Carisbrook Road, Carisbrook High Street, Priory Road, and out Gunville Road to join the Forest Road by the traffic lights there to go west which is going to put a tremendous strain on my road system there, which is already, during school times, uh, and I have five schools in the area, uh, and the school buses and the ordinary bus traffic and the rush hour uh, traffic, is, it's a nightmare already. Uh, what I would like to have is, is a proper sketch showing the diversion routes. Uh, I would like to see assurances that traffic controls will be put in place to calm and manage traffic flows particularly at peak times and at school times, probably with temporary traffic lights at the bottom of um, uh, Cedar Hill and possibly up at the Waverley as well, where there are two very dangerous uh, mini roundabouts. Um, crossing patrol officers will be in place uh, at all times, particularly on the Gunville Road, where we have no crossing patrol officer any longer. And as this will be an extremely bu busy route, um, I think it's absolutely essential for the safety of, uh, of the school children. We have a pedestrian crossing, but when the traffic's busy, it's very hard to spot that pedestrian crossing. Um, so I would like a, a patrol officer put in there, a, a, a school patrol officer in place. And I'm sure we can borrow one for a, the number of weeks from another uh, area which is not so busy, as I've had them borrowed from my ward in the past. Um, the relocation of um, parked vehicles to aid traffic flow, and I'm thinking particularly along the, by the high pavement between the Simeon uh, Green and the car showrooms by the bottom of Wellington Road there, where I have 20 or 30 cars parked there in a place where two large vehicles cannot park, pass each other. Um, perhaps we could be looking at permits for them to park elsewhere uh, and, uh, and um, to relieve that uh, traffic jam, which is bad e every day of the week already. Um, also, uh, we have a very narrow road, as some of you may recall by Dave Deaths, it's called Priory Road. Uh, it barely takes a lorry down it. Uh, any oncoming vehicle very often ends up driving down the single pavement there, which is extremely narrow as well. This is also the designated route, and as you may have noticed, rather large, tra large tractors these days. It's the designated route for the anaerobic digester tractors to use along Priory Road and Gumbel Road. And as you've probably observed, they're actually cutting maize at the moment. So uh, they're busy. Uh, I've just got two more points, if I may just complete those, Chairman. Um, I understand that this diversion is only for five weeks initially. Uh, but presumably the whole thing will be reversed when the other side of the carriageway is worked on. Can we confirm this? I'm not sure. I haven't had those details. And finally, what impact will the Newport to Cow stretch of works have on my ward? And I'm looking particularly at the junction of Betty Horn, uh, of Betty Horn Lane, White House and Forest Road there, which is an extremely dangerous junction. And um, uh, could we put temporary traffic lights in there? because I envisage extra heavy traffic using that route, trying to get to the West White from Cowes to, to, to miss the St. Mary's works. 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, that will be addressed in a minute. Uh, Councillor Abraham, if you're next. Uh, <coughs> thank you, um, Chairman. Um, I represent Wootton Bridge and certainly uh, Fairley Road, or oh, sorry, the Coppins Bridge uh, lights do cause tailbacks right to Wootton on, on some days. So I'm well aware of the uh, situation at, uh, at uh, Coppins Bridge. Uh, in fact, when the, uh, the road, for, uh, Coppins Bridge first had lights, there was a sign put up at Wootton which was welcome to the Coppins Bridge uh, tailback scheme, which was in about 1989, I believe. Um, we, uh, oh sorry, I am quite interested in what uh, Councillor Price has actually said, and I think that is something that I would hope that could be investigated further, how we actually look at the, the lights and how they, uh, how it, they impact on the, the fl flow of traffic. I expect there will be some concern from, from officers, but I do actually think that we do need to, to, to look at that. Uh, Councillor Jones-Evans talked about the, uh, the, the 2010 traffic model, and I re remember that. I was on the Cabinet at, at the time, and certainly we, we looked at, at various options around that. I wasn't a great fan of closing off the lower part of the high street put in traffic through uh, residential streets, I didn't think was a particularly good idea. One thing that uh, did come out was that um, we asked officers to look at uh, the potential of opening up the, the lower part of furlongs with a view to uh, having a, a, a road that could actually let traffic flow into Newport that wanted to go into to the town centre. That, I don't think, has ever been looked at. I do think we really do need to look at Coppins Bridge. I think, and I, I do support that uh, against uh, what uh, Julie has, has said. I do think we need to, to look at that. But it, it is this holistic approach to the whole thing. We need to be able to, to move traffic um, around Coppins Bridge much faster. And what a lot of uh, people don't, wouldn't appreciate is um, Fairley Road is one of only two roads on the island that are, are monitored for, for uh, uh, traffic fumes. Uh, so I think um, we need to, to, to understand that. And when, but when we talk about uh, uh, the, the approach for, for cycling and walking, I, I do support that. We are looking at that as part of the, uh, of the, the Newport Quay project. But unfortunately, they don't all come together. And I think that is part of the problem that, that we've got. We've got a, a vision, but we just don't seem to be able to pull it together uh, at one particular time. Um, the, the problem will be, I think, if we uh, postpone this tonight, or ask for it to be postponed, is that uh, we will, will lose, lose the money. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Love, you next know, speak in three minutes starts now. Thank you, Chair. I really don't know where to start, to be honest. But this amendment to the motion, it talks about traffic lights and it talks about disruption. It doesn't talk about anything else at all that really matters to this scheme. I mean, was it written by a child? I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, it doesn't even address the fundamental issues that we're here to talk about tonight. Councillor Hastings, were you at a different meeting from me yesterday? Because it seems completely different in terms of what you're actually sat, sat and said there and read by script today. It's, it's just, just unbelievable. Good preparation prevents poor performance. We all know that. So why are we now sat in here with less than a week to go talking about something that should have been talked about months ago? The presentation that I attended with Councillor Hastings and other people yesterday was actually a really good presentation. It was a fantastic presentation. It should have been done months and months and months ago. People are out there on the streets at the moment and they have no idea how they're going to get around this huge um, diversion that's going on or what's happening. It's just ridiculous. Where is the communication? In fact, I would say the biggest failure of this council is in its communications, comms. We keep saying it time after time after time about different projects, and it never improves. 
So I'm going to go forward now and talk about, you know, £9.6 million pounds spent at, at uh, St. Mary's and £1.5 million, roughly, of S106 money. Spent on a fantasy scheme, because we don't even know that those 1,500 houses, sorry, 1,400 houses, are going to be built. We don't know that. So, yeah, so we're planning for the future. If we were planning for the future, we would put all of that money into sorting out Coppins Bridge. And the thing that I learned at that meeting yesterday, which was unbelievable, is that nobody has actually even come up with or started to work on the plans for Coppins Bridge. It's not even developed. And what's more, then it's told to us that it's going to need several millions more just to do Coppins Bridge, like, you know, four or five million minimum to sort out Coppins Bridge to do what they really would like to do to future-proof it. So why in God's name are we spending all this money on a fantasy project up there, which will make a difference? I'm not saying it won't make a difference and improve some aspects. We know that it will, but it won't actually address the fundamental issues that every one of our taxpayers out there thought that we were spending the money on to improve Coppins Bridge. That's what the money was there for or thought about, not this fantasy project. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor point, point of order, Chairman, if I may. Can I just point out to Councillor Love that the meeting yesterday that we were both at, the facts that I brought out of it are correct, and, and the meeting was recorded, so you'll be able to play it back via the uh, Newport Parish Council website. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barry, you may speak. Thank you. It's speaking to this motion, so the leader of the cabinet is asking the council to ask the cabinet. That's a bit like talking to yourself, isn't it? <laughs> if, why, why would he need the council to ask him to do something which is apparently his job? If tweaking the traffic lights at Coppins Bridge is such a wonderful thing, and it's going to solve the problems at St Mary's Rainabay. Why hasn't anybody done it before? Yeah. If it's an integral part of making this scheme work, should it go ahead, why hasn't one of these consultants, one of these engineers, these people who know about it, put that in already? Why isn't that an integral part of it? Did the leader wake up this morning and say, oh, I can solve this? I'll ask the council to ask me to tweak the traffic lights. Oh, I don't know, I'm not saying that. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Medland, if you'd like to speak, please. No, you not know, right. Oh, that's working. Sorry about that. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I do welcome uh, Council Stewart's uh, our leader's uh, suggestion about the bridge. It's a fantastic idea. Bridge Old Medina is the obvious solution to the problem of Coppins Bridge because then you can take the traffic ride cows directly across, and it's obviously the solution. But But I think this idea of demolishing, destroying a perfectly viable piece of working road infrastructure and creating 18 months of total transport chaos is utterly mad. I cannot understand the basis of this, the way we're thinking. We have a transport policy, we have a core plan strand transport policy, and it's all about promoting sustainable means of transport. This is not going to help sustainable transport. In fact, the, the, the allowances for Cycling and walking in this plan, I think, are, are, are pathetic. I really do. And I, I think we've all seen Cycle White's proposals, which are really practical ways of improving on the scheme as it's currently proposed. Personally, I've, I've worked here. I've worked in the college. I've worked in the industrial estate. I think we've all, we all know the hospital. As a pedestrian, I've always found the only real way of getting around is to go along the cycle track, even along, along the side of the river, because it's really quite difficult to negotiate this whole area. We should have considered this in the round. We should have looked at all these different areas, including the idea of of Camp Hill and the prison estate community, and how we could integrate them more easily with cycle tracks, with walking ways, because it's really hard to do it at the moment, actually. 
And we ought to be making a much more logical, holistic kind of approach, fitting in with our public health strategy to get people walking more. We know it's good for mental health as well as physical health. This idea of building yet more tarmac just seems to be completely pointless. I just, I just, it seems to be totally counterproductive. We don't really know what the future projections of uh, vehicle growth are. So, yeah, I mean, it does come back to this point. I mean, for me, what people say to me in freshwater is that St Mary's roundabout works. So why on earth replace that when Coppins Bridge is the obvious problem? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Andre, you have to speak, please. Thank you, Chair. I think I'll have to keep this brief because, as you can probably hear, I don't have much of a voice at the moment. Councillor Stewart's mantra seems to be we make decisions evidence based. Well, on scrutiny, we also make our recommendations based on evidence that is presented to us. And we did make recommendations on the evidence that was presented to us in respect of this uh, development. But it would appear that there are, there's lots of evidence that has come forward that does not support this, which has not been listened to. So I would suggest that perhaps there is a, a um, selective hearing going on in terms of the evidence. There seems to be a little bit of scaremongering going on in terms of the capital funding of 9,600,000 that we have been given from government under section 31 of the Local Government Act 2003, which states to fund a package of highway works in Newport Town Centre. Now, it says specifically the grant is intended to facilitate the development of 1,400 homes on former prison land, but though no conditions are attached to it. So the argument that St Mary's Roundabout needs to have the lion's share of this funding, I think, is, is, is not one based on evidence. I think anyone that uses Newport, and we all use Newport, would know that the issue is Coppins Bridge, and both Councillor Medland and Councillor Abraham referred to the need for a holistic approach. And I do not believe here that we are looking at a holistic approach. This amendment, as has been alluded to, calls to urgently review the timings of works and traffic light operation at Coppins Bridge. Well, and the associated works at St Mary's Roundabout, but the proposal before us is not what associated works from St Mary's Roundabout that are necessitating a review of the timing of the works and traffic lights. Surely we need to go back to the drawing board on this. We need to look at all the evidence here. We're told that our decision today is only advisory. Well, I would like to advise the Cabinet to listen very carefully to the decision that's made today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Can I bring in Councillor Brading, please? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, let me start by saying that I agree that um, investment in the whole of the Newport structure is well overdue. There are several parts of Newport that cause traffic problems and it all does need addressing. Um, for 10 years, I drove from Sandown to Cowes every day, um, and the journey through Newport was a nightmare. Quite often, I came home in the evening wishing the traffic lights weren't working so you get through quicker. So I do welcome any adjustment to traffic lights on Coppins Bridge um, that needs to be done. But the Samaritan roundabout is also is a huge problem. When I look at my, uh, from a, a cabinet perspective, one of the aspects of Honey, uh, uh, is Honey Hill School. Councillor Garrett and I have had meetings about Honey Hill School several times. There's a massive problem there. And these works will create extra spaces for Honey Hill's uh, children. Um, and I defy anyone really to say it, they won't, because they're not looking at the safety of the children if they say that. But other comments I want to make. This 
plan went to scrutiny well over 12 months ago, came out with two minor points, minor points that we address, and three of the people that have called in this meeting tonight were actually part of that scrutiny committee. It went to cabinet two days later. No one turned up to question it at cabinet. There have been minor changes to the plans, not major plans, as uh, has been said. Communication is the key to anything, especially something major like this. Um, and yes, you can always do more communication, I get that. But a lot of communication has been done, and I've seen the list of the future, communication has taken place. But more communication is needed now and in, uh, as we go through the future regarding what John said about road closures, etc. But yeah, this is the part of a major redevelopment of the Newport traffic system. So do we say to the government, we don't want your money, take it back? I do agree with Councillor Love, actually, uh, when he says that to have, you're having this conversation four days before commencement is total madness. I absolutely agree with you. This conversation should take place a year ago. It is total madness to be discussing this four days before the work starts. I 100% agree with you. Um, the amendment put forward actually seeks to broaden the work to take Cobbles Bridge into consideration at this point. So I fully support the amendment. I think it's the right thing to do um, going forward. It has to start somewhere. Infrastructure comes in place first. And I think it's the right thing to do now but as part of a bigger picture to solve the whole of the Newport problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brading. Mm -hmm. Councillor Churchman, you're next, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I received an email at lunchtime today which had a copy of the letter from government saying the 9.6 million was being given to us to enable the development of Camp Hill. I would like to ask the leader whether that money would have been awarded to us if we had just asked to improve Coppins Bridge. I think I know what the answer will be. However, as a ride councillor, I would very much like that 9.6 million to come to ride. We have 900 houses for development with absolutely no road infrastructure at all around ride. So Newport, if you don't want it, could we please have it? Councillor Fuller, if you'd like to speak, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, these proposals do nothing to take into consideration the needs of pedestrians, the needs of cyclists and public transport users. This is all the more relevant given the proximity of employment hubs, schools, the college, the hospital nearby, plus developments with uncertainty over future housing numbers. I found it astonishing that traffic planners and professionals seemingly did not consider these needs as a priority within this vanity project. Why did this not happen? What is of concern and what I find perverse is that pedestrians will be vying for space with, uh, with cyclists. In addition to this is that outpatients will be expected to cross three arms of an enlarged b and roundabout not only will pedestrians be forced to do this, but they will have the additional struggle to cross lanes of traffic to access the hospital in some places. The other concern that I have is the lack of communications. Ian advised councillors that in his view, this communication strategy was the best he'd seen ever. I think the jury is out on this. Despite numerous requests to do so, there was no engagement in advance of the, these proposals with local councils, with businesses and residents, despite, and despite this uh, proposal being on the cards for some time. The cynic in me asks me, why did this not happen? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. I'll bring in the Cabinet member responsible for transport, Councillor Ward, please. I hear about um, um, a, a, an awful lot of conjecture actually coming from across the chamber. This could happen, that could happen, this may not happen, that couldn't happen. And I'm thinking, we should have spoken about this months and months ago. Months and months ago it went to scrutiny. Months and months ago we had briefing sessions. How many of you turned up? 
Oh, one, two, you had a special briefing, okay? Well, I say, actually, very few of you turned up. You were so concerned, actually, you couldn't care less. Until now, till you want to jump on the bandwagon, okay? Members opposite can dismiss the prospect of 1,400 houses on the prison estate. That's never going to happen, she says. But what if it does? It's irresponsible to dismiss that. How many times have members, all of us, complained about the lack of infrastructure to support housing? Yet when it's planned, you want to undermine it. Councillor Price and I discussed switching off Golden's Bridge lights, didn't we? And I support that. In fact, we came up with the idea ourselves. I've suggested this before to your officers, and they are understandably concerned. But I think if we switch them off in the evening to start with, it will give drivers the opportunity to adjust, and then maybe we can move on from there. As Cowes, Gurnard, Newport and Carrisville Town Council members and hauliers have been extensively briefed, I'm sure they understand the positives of this and the constraints of the Newport Traffic Junction Improvement Plan. You know the plan is primarily to future-proof Newport Strategic Junctions in the face of increasing development and the associated increase in traffic levels. That is going to happen. We live in the real world. However, I stress the plan will also improve the current situation, which residents are focusing on today. I fully understand the concern about Coppins Bridge, and we are not dismissing that. It will be done. Not everything can be done because we ha don't have unlimited resources. However, however, to disrupt the current plan is to endanger the planned improvements and condemn residents to longer and longer delays, more and more congestion, more and more pollution, and the degradation of their quality of life as their traffic levels inevitably rise. How will you justify that to your residents? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Uh, I think we've debated that one enough. I'm comfortable with that. If uh, you could sum up, please, Leader. I'm sorry, there's no public... It's, it's not a public meeting. It's a public meeting. They can't sum up. More conjecture, Chairman. You don't sum up. Excuse me, it's, it's not a public meeting, I'm sorry. Sorry. You're not allowed to speak from a gallery, please. Bring in Councillor Jones Evans. Would you like to sum up, please? I'm sorry, I, I, I need to warn you not to speak anymore, please. We're going to have to. We're going to have to clear the gallery if you don't. If you don't keep quiet, please. Sorry, we're not allowed to discuss things from the gallery. I will. I will adjourn this meeting. If you carry on, I will adjourn the meeting. I am warning you. Could you please remove him? Excuse me, I've got a agenda meeting until the gallery is cleared. Thank you very much.